everybody, Carmel Laponte here with Quality Sewing in Vacuum. Um, I'm here today to take a little time and talk through tips on buying a sewing machine. There are so many different sewing machines on the market today, which is really amazing and fun, but can probably be sort of overwhelming when you're not really sure what it is you want in a new sewing machine. So I'm going to sort of just take you through some of my favorite features today, but also just some things to think about when you're thinking about getting a new sewing machine. Um, we're going to mostly focus on sewing machines. We'll talk a little bit about embroidery machines and quilting machines, but we're going to really just sort of stick with machines sort of like this. So the number one thing uh, to think about is for you to think about what it is you want your sewing machine to do for you. Most of you know, likely you already have a sewing machine. So if you already have a sewing machine, what are the things you love about it? What are the things you don't really like about it? You know, I would jot some notes down about that. You know, what are some things that you really wish it did that it just isn't able to do? Um, those things will really help you uh, sort of make sure you're asking the right questions. Because I am a really big fan of getting in front of a sewing machine and touching and feeling it. There are tons of beautiful brands out there. Like right now I'm sitting by a couple of brothers. We have the Viking, Bernina, Foth. Um, you know, we also carry Janome and Juki and Burnett, and all of those brands are really lovely, high quality, and Baby Lock, of course, almost forgot them, high quality brands. And you're going to do well purchasing almost any one of those machines. The real key is finding a machine that makes sense to you and is going to work to do everything that you want it to do to expand your craft. Because sewing should be fun, it should be relaxing, and your machine should really just be an amazing tool that helps expand that craft for you. So those are the things that I would first think about. You know, what do you, where do you want to go in your sewing? What does your sewing machine do now that you really love and you want to make sure your new machine has it? And what, um, and what does your machine maybe not, is un, not capable of doing for you at this moment? So those are the first things I would talk, I would think about. Um, the other thing that's always good is if you have friends who are sewing enthusiasts and they're sewing a lot and they have a fun machine, ask them what they love about their machine. That's another great way to do some research. So right now I thought what I would do is I would take you through some of my favorite features on sewing machines. Some of the features that I have to have if I'm sewing because I've gotten so used to them. What's really fun about sewing machines, much like our cell phones and all of our other technology, Sewing machines now can do way more than the machines could do 25 years ago. Um, and what that means for the sewers, you know, the quilters, is that now we have machines that make our sewing just more enjoyable. So that is super fun. So probably my number one thing, um, and most of the machine, many, many machines have this, is a really amazing um, automatic, automatic needle threader. So I just pulled the thread out of this needle. I'm going to lay it in here. I'm just going to clip it tear it off there and I'm just going to hit the, the threader button and it's going to come down and it's going to thread that needle for me. So this seems like a small thing, but really it is so helpful to have a machine that threads, threads your needle for you. And lots of machines do it. This one does it. This machine over here also has a built-in needle threader. That's a little bit different. It's you're just going to lay this one in, clip it up here, and it's going to go like this and thread that needle for you. So the, the needle threaders built into the machines are so handy and helpful. So that's one of my features. Like, I have to have a needle threader on my sewing machine. Okay, some of the other features that I love in the new machines um, is uh, the automatic tie-off. So a lot of, a lot, you know, if your machine is not a computerized machine, you probably use your reverse button, right? You start sewing, you use your reverse button, it back tacks for you, and you go forward. A lot of new machines have the ability for you to automatically set that. So I can say, okay, great. I'm just going to tell it that I want it to automatically tie off for me. So then when I get started, I start sewing here. It's going to go forward, backwards. It's going to lock my stitch for me. And then it will continue going forwards. This machine um, has a speed control here so I can make it go faster. And then when I, when I get to the end here, I can just tap my reverse button and it'll go forward, backwards. It'll lock my stitch and come to a complete stop. And then this machine also has another one of my favorite features. It has the needle, the thread cutters, so I can cut it here. And what's beautiful about that is look at that beautiful seam where you just have this lovely tie-off at the back and tie-off at the front. 
Some machines will even do it where it just does a tie off straight down instead of going forward and backwards. So depending on what sort of sewing you're doing, you can look for those, um, you can look for those features. So the other feature that um, I just mentioned it a minute ago is the, th uh, the thread cutters. Thread cutters are so handy because then you don't have to cut the thread yourself, the machine's going to do it for you. So this machine here, I can actually set it up that I actually want it to cut my threads for me automatically when I start sewing, when I, when I stop sewing. So I can lower my presser foot. Um, many of the machines now, pretty much all computerized machines, what's beautiful about them is they always stop with your needle in the up position. So what that means is then if the needle's gonna stop in the up position, uh, when you lower your presser foot and you begin sewing, you never have to worry about holding on to your tails because the machine's not going to pull those tails out. The machine is in the right position, so you never have to worry about hanging on to tails, uh, which, is, which is really a lovely, you know, simple thing, but really nice. So this machine, you can use your hand wheel, but it's easier to just use the, the presser foot up and down button. So I'm going to lower my presser foot here. Um, and, you know, a lot of machines have the presser foot lifter. This one still has a presser foot lifter right here, um, or you can use the button. So I'm uh, over here I'm on my screen here, lots of machines have these buttons in different places. Some of them have it where you pre-program it here on the machine, some you program it up here, some you program it on a smaller screen, uh, but on this particular machine, I'm just gonna program my automatic tie-up and my cut, and so then I'm gonna start sewing, it's gonna go that forward backwards again, it's gonna lock that stitch, it's gonna go to the end. And this time when I get to the end, I will tap it and it's going to do my forward backwards and it's going to cut my thread. So really simple but super handy um, feature built into the machine. The other thing that many machines have is needle up and needle down. So going back to how we're talking how the machine, the needle always in the up position, when you stop on most new computerized machines, this is super handy, right? Because then you stop, the needle is up, you can raise your presser foot and pull your fabric out. But sometimes when you're quilting or you have a large project, you actually want your needle to stop in the down position. And the reason for that is because you want to keep your hands on your fabric um, and you don't want to lose your, lose your stitching. So on this machine, I can just tell it right here to put it in the needle down position or I can just tell it on my screen that I always want it to stop in the needle down position. So now when I'm sewing, oh, it's going to do the forward backwards that I have it on. Now when I'm sewing and I stop, my needle will stop in the down position. Um, and this particular machine also actually automatically raises my presser foot for me, so I don't have to do that. Some machines, the needle down will not raise your presser foot, but this one is programmed to also raise my presser foot, so now I can turn that corner or do whatever it is. Sometimes when I'm quilting, I just need to take a break, and I just want my needle to stay right where it was so nothing shifts or moves. Okay, so I'm going to just lower my presser foot again here and start sewing. Stop, easily can turn that corner. And this is just really, really handy um, when you want to keep your hands on your fabric and sewing instead of having to touch your hand wheel or, um, or take your hands off of your project. Okay, another one of my favorite features. How many of you, I'm sure you've all done this, have been quilting or sewing along merrily and not realize that your bobbin thread is gone. Me? It's always when I am like on a deadline and trying to get something done and I'm already behind. That's always when it happens to me, right? But the new machines have an amazing thing where they will tell you when your bobbin thread is low. So some of them have a, a warning that pops up on your screen. Some of them will have a light that will pop up on their screen. Um, there's lots of, different, um, lots of different ways that the machines will tell you that your bobbin thread is low. And a lot of the machines also have these really handy clear, uh, clear bobbin tops, which is great because you can even every time you like are working in there and moving your fabric, you can see how much bobbin thread you have, which is also very handy. Um, but most of them have a bobbin, many of them have a bobbin light sensor that tells you when your bobbin thread is low. And that is also one of my favorite features. So, so far we've talked about my favorite features of automatic tie off, needle up, needle down, the scissors, um, the bobbin light indicator. Uh, we talked a little bit about an automatic presser foot uh, because those are just, that's just a great feature to have. And I've been showing it here on this machine, but many of these features I'm talking about um, are on lots of different machines. 
So like this machine here, um, this is a more, um, a more basic machine machine than the one that I was on, but it also has, you know, it has the needle up, needle down. It has um, the tie off. It has a lot of really nice features. You know, it has all of these ease of use features right here where you can select your, you can select your stitch by dialing it, right? The machine tells me what foot to use. The machine tells me what stitch length and width it is on, and then I can adjust it. So there's a lot of things that are built into almost all the machines that are going to make your sewing so much easier. This foff over here, it shows up a little differently. Here you can see everything on the screen. And what's fun about this one is when I select a stitch, and maybe I go to this guy right here, when I adjust the stitch width or the stitch length, it actually shows me how the stitch is going to look different. Also incredibly helpful because then we know if like when we're making the stitch wider or narrower or we're making the stitch length longer or shorter, exactly how it's gonna stitch out when I start stitching it, um, which is really, really handy. This guy has its automatic tie off button right here. The needle, the presser foot up, presser foot down. Um, it has its scissors right here. And it has some lights right down here for if you're going to in reverse or not. But it keeps all of these really, what is consistent amongst most of the machines is all of those really easy use, ease of use features are in the front of the machine and they're easy to find. So if we just lower this guy down here, lower this presser foot, oh, I'm gonna move it, move it maybe not on top of these other lines. And we're just gonna start sewing that pattern. You'll be able to see that it, the pattern is exactly like what we see up here. Great, we'll stop it here. We'll use my thread cutters. And it'll raise it up and you can see these two are really the same thing. Um, and it was great that we could preview it there, right there on the screen, so we don't need to sew out so many samples to make sure we know what we're actually stitching. So the other thing that most of the new machines are going to have is a feeding system. And I would, I would ask, you know, whatever machine you're looking at, you know, what, what sort of feeding system is it? Like the FOF, for instance, has a really unique dual feed system. Um, so do some of the Burnettes um, and the Janomis. And the, um, there's many machines now that have this dual feed feature on the back. And what this feature does for you is instead of just having the bottom feed dogs that go like this, you get this top one that comes down like this and holds all of those layers of fabric together. So this is amazing for quilting when you have you know, your bottom layer, your batting, and your top layer because it holds them all together so they all move together as you're sewing. Nothing is slipping and sliding. It's great for really uh, lightweight fabric, for really heavy duty fabric, but almost all of the brands have some sort of mechanism that they have really improved feeding systems that are going to allow you to sew through all different types of fabric, whether that be a fine fabric or a heavy duty fabric. And back here I have the Bernina, it has beautiful, it has a beautiful screen as well. We have the Viking. All of the different brands have lots of really amazing features, uh, ease of use features built into them that are gonna help make your sewing easier. So the other thing that I always like people to think about is how big are your projects? Because if you'll notice, the size difference between some of these machines is really pretty different. This guy is a pretty small opening compared to this guy over here is a 10 inch opening. And then up over here, um, this guy is actually an 11.25 inches. So if you're doing large projects, quilting, those sorts of things, having more space to, uh, to the right of your needle is going to help give you more space to put, to roll your project up and in here and have more space to maneuver. So that is definitely another consideration, consideration that I would make. So really we've talked a lot about sewing machines here. Um, I did want to take, you know, if anyone has questions, feel free to like pop those on there. We can answer them. Um, I also wanted to talk a little bit about embroidery machines because embroidery machines are sort of a whole different thing to think about. Um, most embroidery machines, we have some embroidery machines that are dedicated embroidery, meaning they're just going to do embroidery. And then we have some embroidery machines that are, that are embroidery and sewing. So the one I'm standing in front of right here this is a brother, it is sewing and embroidery. So there's benefits to each of them. Uh, sometimes it's nice to just have a dedicated embroidery machine that's gonna do your embroidering while you're sewing over here on your other machine. And sometimes it's nice to have a combination machine that can just do everything. 
So the thing about an embroidery machine to think about is probably my number one thing to, I always ask people is like, what sort of, what size embroidery do you want to do? Because different embroidery machines are going to come with different embroidery, different areas. So some can only embroider like a four by four area. Some can only embroider a five by seven area. And then some can embroider a much larger area, right? This is even bigger than a six by 10. This is a nine and a half by 14 inch hoop. Um, and so thinking about what you might want to embroider um, can be really helpful to find, um, to find a machine that's going to give you the embroidery capabilities that you're looking for. What I love about the embroidery machines is how easy they are to use. Um, I can just go to my home screen here and select embroidery. My carriage is going to move. It's giving me a nice warning. This machine has a big, beautiful touch screen, so it's very easy to navigate. Let's say I just want to go and put something in here. Maybe I want to grab a Disney design. So I grab a, a Disney design here. I grab a Mickey. I, you can see what, how many colors it's going to be. You can see how many um, stitches are here. You can see how many minutes it will take. You can go to set. I can move him around wherever I want him. Maybe I want to add something. So maybe I want to add Mickey's name. I can go here, select some letters. Oh, that might be bigger than I want. Let's go to the medium size. And then we'll go to lowercase. And I can just type this in. And maybe I want to array it. So I want it to arc around Mickey. Put it just... Oh, I have to hit OK first. <laughs> and then I go to set. I can move it. So maybe I'm really happy with how this looks. But what you can see here is that it's really easy to just build everything in the screen. Um, and it's all touch screen. And it's just incredibly easy to use. And then you can just go to embroidery. And then you could begin stitching this out. Um, and there's lots of information right here on the screen for you. It tells you, once again, how many stitches it is, how long it will take, how many colors. You can see the first color is white. Um, and it tells you all of the next colors that you will need. Everything is right there. So embroidery is very fun. Um, it's very easy to do. Um, and it's in a lot of the machines. Um, and it's definitely something I would consider when I'm thinking about a sewing machine. Do I want a machine that just sews and quilts? Do I want a machine that sews and quilts and does embroidery? Um, because there, there's a lot of fun things you can do with an embroidery machine. The other thing that I really recommend doing is I do, like I said at the beginning, you know, I recommend actually test driving machines. I really recommend going into a store, if at all possible, and sewing on them, because that's really how you'll be able to tell if you have found the right machine for you, uh, because every machine's a little bit different. And sometimes, you know, just sitting down and sewing on it uh, will, help, will help you see that it's gonna do everything that you want it to do. Um, you know, if you're not here, we are, uh, we are quality sewing and vacuum, and we are in the Seattle area. We're all up and down the I-5 corridor in western Washington. Um, and so if you live here locally, we'd love, we'd love to help you find a new sewing machine. Uh, we can sit down with you and, um, and take you through all the machines. You know, if you don't live in, in the Puget Sound area, or even if you do and you would prefer to just order online, we do have a website qualitysewing.com and you can order. Uh, we also have a really lovely customer service team that answers phones every day and they would love to help you over the phone. So Linda asked a question, yes. once we decide on a machine and purchase it, do you offer classes to learn your new machine either virtual or live? Linda, thank you so much. I was going to totally forget to talk about our class program. So I really appreciate the question. So yes, Linda, we do have classes. So we right now, if you go to qualitysewing.com and go to classes, um, you will see that there's a whole bunch of learn to use your sewing machine classes that are all virtual. Um, you just register and then we email you a link and you can watch the entire, the entire video on how to learn to use your sewing machine. Now, if after you do that, if you actually would still like some more in-person time, we are also happy right now to set some one-on-one -on -one time together with you and take you through your machine. We definitely, it's really important to us that everyone know how, knows how to use their machines. So that's why, you know, we will offer hands-on learn to use your sewing machine classes again. But right now we have the virtual component and then if you need some more help, we are always happy to help you in store. Um, and we also, you can also always reach out over the phone and, um, and we can help you that way as well. So I hope that this has been helpful. There's lots of beautiful machines out there. Um, go out, test drive some. If you have some questions about machines, if you've been looking for a machine, we have many of the specials on our website um, and some of the machines you can click and purchase them. 
and we can ship them right to your door. Some of the machines we can only ship to Western Washington, and some of those machines just say, there's a little button that says, you know, request more info. So if you're curious about one of those, just request some more info and we will reach back out to you or give our, give one of our local stores a phone call or come into a local store or give our online team a phone call. And we have lots of people that would be really excited to talk to you. Thanks everybody, have a great day.